some people have a natural gift for knocking down silliness and unpacking the fallacious reasoning in it. I'd say I'm reasonably good at it, but there are people who are much more skilled. Without further ado, and with kind permission from him, here's a video by uh, Professor Darius Spearman from uh, several years ago. I'm going to share it. And I'm going to share the link. I'm not going to play it all. I'm going to play a few snippets, but I'm going to put the link to, down at the bottom of this presentation. And the general proposition of it was, in this edition of Say What? Exploration of Epistemology, a word I hate, um, we, because it, it always rumbles out the wrong way half the time, we explored the claim that multicultural education miseducates young people. Claim from Simon Webb's YouTube channel, History Debunked. Now, I'm going to put a link to it after I play, well, I'll play a couple of minutes of it, no more. Um, and you will see um, Professor Darius knocking it down bit by bit by bit. We'll probably get a silly advert first, so of course. Might not be the best for everyone, but for business. Where we examine the claim that multicultural education is going after the hearts and minds of young people. What? Just, I'll stop it there for a minute to say what is uh, 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 similar words in local I idioms go through the minds of many people watching this, the videos over at that particular channel. Welcome back to African Elements. If you're new to this channel, we're taking Black and Africana Studies material and bringing it to the masses. In this series, we're examining specific claims that relate to Black Studies to determine where they fall short in meeting their burden of proof. In this video, we visit Simon Webb, whose YouTube channel History Debunked claims that multicultural history degrades education in the service of cultural sensitivity. Does he make his case? If you already know the rules, then just skip to over here. But for now, let's go over the criteria to establish whether this claim warrants belief. I'm going to hold up a red light, yellow light, or a green light. Green means go, but I'll bring up a yellow or red light whenever I come to a point where we need to slow down or stop. That's either a bold claim with no evidence, a vague, overly broad, simplistic, or unfalsifiable claim, meaning there's no way to determine whether the claim is true or false, or something that's logically fallacious. Some logical fallacies include circular reasoning, this is true because it's true. We see that most often when someone makes a claim and then says a bunch of things that don't support the claim and then just repeats the claim. Other fallacies include the black swan fallacy, which basically asserts that because you've never seen something, it doesn't exist. We'll see that a lot. There are also appeals to emotion, which often link a position to keeping children safe in some way without actually providing evidence that the children are otherwise in danger. I think you can see where this is going. Those are the most common examples of logical fallacies, but there are many others that I'm sure we'll encounter. So, let's jump in. Hello again. I want to talk today about multicultural education, which most of you probably know it means trying to work in the perspectives of minority groups in society uh, to show their history, their cultures, religions and so on in the education provided for everybody. What? That's fairly accurate, but as we'll see, he doesn't seem to fully grasp what the goals of multicultural education. Let's play this for about 30 more seconds, and then I'm going to upload this video and pop the link up underneath it. The goal isn't to just shoehorn in various groups just for the sake of marking some checklist. In fact, being able to view events from multiple perspectives is an important tool for gaining a critical understanding of history. For example, there were different and often conflicting perspectives within the abolitionist movement. On one hand, there were many white liberals in the North who opposed slavery, but that didn't necessarily mean they wanted black kids sitting next to their children in public schools. For black folks, abolition was more than a struggle to end slavery. And I'll end it by noticing that's a great point to end it. The nuances of history are what's been discussed here. Something that seems to get lost on many of these um, 
channels that seem to be engaging in the wonders of trying to return to a rosy tinted age where the age of British Empire existed. The problem is it never really did. And instead of dealing with the problems that face us in Britain right now, what they do is look for scapegoats, which is always a bad route to take.